Hey chemistry people, it is Mr. Boylan. It's gonna be a short and sweet one here today. We're gonna to make some qualitative or quantitative predictions about electrolytic reactions based on half cell reactions potentials and or Faraday's laws and analyze data regarding electrolytic cells to identify properties of the underlying redox reaction. Whew. All right, so if we break that down a little bit, we're gonna talk now about electrolytic cells, uh, which are different from your voltaic cells, but another type of electrochemical cell. Uh, we're gonna bust out our math skills to solve for current, charge, or time elapsed uh, for an electrolytic cell setup. And then lastly, stoichiometry never going away. Uh, we're gonna apply some stoic to some of the concepts in electrolytic cells. All right, so basically, uh, with your voltaic or galvanic cells, which we talked about in the last class, that was a spontaneous reaction that would occur essentially on its own. It was thermodynamically favored. Uh, the electrolytic cells we're gonna talk about today are non-thermodynamically favored or non-spontaneous. Uh, in other words, you gotta apply some sort of power source in order to get the reaction to happen. It won't happen on its own. Uh, but you can get some pretty cool things to happen with electrolytic cells. Uh, primarily, as you watch in that intro video, we can uh, do some electroplating uh, and some other pretty cool things that we'll talk about uh, here for electrolytic cells. Just a couple of things to keep in mind for this part of your, uh, your notes. Electrolytic cells require electrical energy to force a non-favored redox reaction to occur. So different from your voltaic or galvanic cells where uh, we didn't have to force those reactions to happen, they were spontaneous and we didn't have to apply any energy in order to get it to happen. Uh, those were thermodynamically favored. So a little bit different here, but again, a redox reaction. Uh, some things to keep in mind, our anode is still the place where we'll have oxidation that will occur. Uh, reduction will also still occur at our cathode, although we'll talk about how things have changed slightly. The big thing to keep in mind here with electrolytic cells is we're going to have a negative uh, standard cell potential and positive Gibbs free energy changes. Now, we're going to look at some quantitative aspects of electro uh, electrolysis. Um, basically, we're going to start to apply some of the stoichiometry to electrochemistry, um, or in another way. If you know the current and the time uh, that you apply that current, you can calculate the charge in coulombs by rearranging the equation that's given to you on the formula chart there, where uh, I is your current, Q is your charge in coulombs, and T is your time in seconds. Uh, once you know the charge in coulombs, you can determine how many moles of electrons were involved in the reaction simply by dividing by Faraday's constant, or that 96,500 coulombs per moles of electrons. Okay, so something really quick uh, that we kind of lied to you about in your first year chemistry course uh, to make your life easier uh, that you should keep in mind as you're working through some of these problems. Uh, in the past, we just said, oh, electrons have a negative one charge and protons have a positive one charge. Uh, but that is just relative to one another. Uh, the charge in coulombs is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 for each electron and positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 for each proton. And so because they are uh, equal in magnitude but opposite in sign, we just said, oh, relative to one another, plus one, minus one. Uh, we also lied about the masses, but we're not gonna go there today. So what this means is, as you try to make sense of Faraday's constant, uh, which is the charge in coulombs per mole of electrons, well, if each electron has a charge of uh, 1.6, and it's really 1.6 like, 022 or something like that, uh, times 10 to the negative 19, and that's for each electron, and you have 6.022, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 electrons in a mole, we get 96,400, we get roughly 96,500, which is Faraday's constant. So. That's where that number comes from for Faraday's constant. Uh, it's basically a lie that we told you in first year chemistry that uh, electrons have a negative one charge 
and protons have a positive one charge. Uh, but relative to one another, that is in fact the case. But keep in mind, that's where this Faraday's constant is coming from. It's the charge it's the charge in coulombs for every mole of electrons and each individual electron does not have a charge of negative one. Um, that's just relative to the proton. Once you know the number of moles of electrons and you know the half reaction for the metal, you can find out how many moles of metal played it out. Uh, for example, from the half reaction that's provided there in your notes, we know that for every three moles of electrons consumed um, or gained there by that gold ion, we're gonna get one mole of gold. And then once you know the number of moles of the metal, you can use what you know from stoichiometry to calculate the number of grams of your metal.